As promised, here's the Nine Barista Espresso Maker. Admire its intriguing design and handsome looks while I disclaim. This is a loaner which I've since returned. The company arranged shipping back and forth, so I made a donation of 50 euros to Doctors Without Borders on their behalf to square us. As you might know, I don't accept goods of any kind from coffee-related businesses, and I consider the convenience of receiving a loaner to be a good for which I need to settle up so you can remain confident that I'm doing reviews here, not commercials. You'll notice a superficial resemblance to a mocha pot. Don't be misled. This is a legitimate espresso maker that uses heat alone to drive the process. No pump, no piston, no lever. Just valves. It's very clever. The designer, a man called William Playford, is an engineer who had been concerned with jet propulsion and noticed obvious similarities. Making espresso is also a matter of temperatures, pressures, and fluid dynamics. So why not approach it from that angle and see what happens? And what happens is you can get a competent device, a bit touchy to dial in, but worth the effort. I've watched a number of YouTube videos, and I've noticed some consistent challenges with shot times. So I'll focus this video on zeroing in for a delicious cup of coffee. I will also compare it to the Cafelat robot for you cross shoppers out there. So stick around for a few espresso adventures and possible misadventures. Oh my God. It's like a miracle. To get the best result, you will, of course, need a quality grinder. I'll use my EasyPresso JE Plus because these two make a good economical pair that can perform on a professional level. With a setup like this and a bit of practice and understanding, you can make true espresso for less than 500 bucks all in. Very wired gourmet. The 9 bar has been around for a while and there are plenty of videos, so I'm going to assume you get the basics, but here's a quick recap just in case. Water in the boiler heats until the steam pressure reaches around 9 atmospheres, at which point it overcomes a spring-loaded valve and pushes the water toward the coffee. But the water is far too hot to make good espresso, so the gadget is designed to lower the water's temperature without reducing the pressure behind it, and that is a bit of a trick. I told you it was clever. It's designed to make a standard double shot with a 1 to 2 ratio, say 20 grams of coffee in for around 40 milliliters of espresso out. So just enough for two people to share, depending on the people. What follows is the kind of workflow you can expect if you're using a hand grinder. Obviously, an electric grinder with a proper dosing funnel will be a bit faster and more convenient. Start by filling the boiler, which holds 120 milliliters. The basket is 53 millimeters and well made. The company also sells a top shelf replacement from IMS for those among us who are never satisfied. To be honest, I doubt I would buy it. This one is fine. I tried it with some medium roast coffee, but I wasn't thrilled. The flavor was kind of tame, so I'm using a nice dark roast here. Well, as dark as I like to go, which would be just this side of second crack. I like to see a bit of a sheen, but no hints of char or charred flavors. Fully developed, let's call it. Definitely more complex and interesting. This integrated dosing cup slash funnel is not my favorite feature of the JE Plus, as I mentioned in my review a while back. But it does sit nicely on a number of gadgets from 58 millimeters down to 46 millimeters. Getting the coffee to slide down the sides into the basket is kind of frustrating though. Once that's done, I've got a mound here that I can distribute nicely with this grotesquely ugly but virtually free gizmo I cobbled together using an acid brush handle and a mini whisk keychain ornament. It works too.
Now I'll use the Tamp. It's heavy, well finished, and feels good in the hand. It's pretty deluxe for an included accessory. I'm tamping at a height that's unnatural to me with my arms around the camera tripod. And yet, as you can see, it does a fine job. It feels good and it fits well. Now you can see that the coffee is dead level despite the additional awkwardness. I'm going to use an AeroPress paper filter cut to size to help distribute the water evenly, but more importantly, to keep the chamber clean. I actually had no problem with water distribution or puck saturation without the paper. This silicone screen works as intended, but I always found some grit in the chamber here, and on one occasion it had migrated below this plate and had blocked the valve, making the device unusable. I had to disassemble it. Coffee had got between this white conical valve and its seat. I dutifully filmed the disassembly and cleaning process for you, which I found to be straightforward and easy. But for the life of me, I can't find the footage. I have a feeling that I neglected to press the record button. Not for the first time, either. I experimented with various doses and found that the sweet spot is 18 to 20 grams. I definitely like the flavors from darker roasts and finer grinding. When I got it dialed in for a 40 second extraction, the flavor opened up. You'll want to add 5 seconds to the clock from the moment when the coffee first appears for more consistent comparisons with other devices. I pushed it a little farther and found that 45 to 50 seconds works even better. I get more complexity this way, good sweetness and body and bitterness with that leathery forest floor umami that's so often lacking. Any shot 30 seconds or faster yielded thinner, sour, less interesting coffee. With the Cafelat robot, where I can dial in by feel, I find that a 15 second pre-infusion followed by a 40 or 45 second extraction really breathes life into the coffee. Because the cup here preheats itself via conduction, the temperature of the coffee is really nice. The texture is beautiful, as you can infer from this pour, which I have not slowed down. The mousse is fine-grained and persistent. I roasted these beans about three weeks before shooting this video, so what you're seeing is more mechanical than chemical. It's largely down to the machine. Of course, no coffee video would be complete without at least some slow-motion footage, so let's watch that again. My experience with around 20 shots inclines me to recommend flirting with darker roasting, finer grinding, and slower extraction, seeking a shot time of around 45 seconds, possibly a little more if you dare to antagonize the guardians of third wave purity. The pucks look great, by the way, with no hint of channeling or uneven saturation. So this is a competent espresso device that can make delicious coffee. There are limitations. You can't adjust the amount of water, or its temperature, or its pressure, or its rate of flow. Those factors are baked in. There's not much flexibility with dose, so the ratio is what it is. I find 18 grams to be a boundary below which flavor penalties begin to show. Alongside your choice of coffee, the principal tuning knob here is grit size to regulate your shot times. And of course, you can start pouring a little early for that ristretto effect. The nine bar and the bot make true espresso, on a budget, with very little compromise. Both have limitations, for the robot its temperature, for the nine barista its workflow. If you like to make several shots in succession, this gadget is not your solution. Now for the most subjective, yet most important comparison of all, flavor. Using the same beans, same dose, same ratio, same shot time, I have to give the edge in flavor to the Nine Barista. I find it hard to say this, but it does taste a little better than my beloved robot. But why should that be if all those variables are the same? It's clearly the temperature. But let's get back to the guest of honor. It's not going to disappoint you in terms of quality or flavor. Well, that's about all I've got for today. Here are a few updates. 
I returned my Eureka Oro single dose to the factory because it just had too many defects. Eureka will send a replacement sometime in the near future. I'll certainly review it in depth to see how many issues have been resolved and how well. Also, in the near future, I'll be looking at Baratza's new Vario Plus grinders in depth. In addition to the usual teardown, I will be swapping out and comparing the ceramic burrs to the steel ones. The Vario Plus could be an important refresh in the mid-range prosumer marketplace. <laughs> we'll see. I'll also compare the new Mazer Omega hand grinder to the Option O Lago Mini because I think they're likely to compete with each other directly. People will be cross-shopping them, so I'll look at both together. And in the not too distant future, I'll post a follow-up to V60 Voodoo with advanced tips and tricks just as I did with my original MochaPod Voodoo. So keep in touch. Cheers!